It's a traditional performing art with a rich history. It draws a million theater goers per year. It's Kabuki. Explore this art with Kabuki actor Nakamura Kazutaro on Kabuki Kuo. It's our first episode of the new season, and our theme is Kabuki Costume Concepts. Discover the gorgeous and unusual designs of previous centuries and learn the tips and tricks of today's costume professionals. Let's open the curtain to find out more. Hi, I'm Haruka Christine. Today we begin a new season of Kabuki Cool. This year, we will continue to explore the fascinating world of Kabuki, together with Kabuki actor Nakamura Kazutaro. Kabuki is a traditional Japanese art, and I'm looking forward to another season of exploring its beauties and its mysteries with Haruka. And wow, we even got a new set! Isn't it beautiful? For our very first episode of the new season, we're focusing on kabuki costumes. We touched on a few different costumes in a previous season, didn't we? What's your view of kabuki costumes as an actor? Well, some are very traditional. Their designs go back over centuries. Others are entirely new creations. Sometimes you can really feel the emotional weight of a costume when you put it on. Let's start with a play that showcases some very flamboyant costumes. We are in the Yoshiwara Pleasure Quarters, in front of the Miyuraya Brothel. The courtesans appear in their spectacular costumes. Agemaki, the top courtesan in the quarter, appears. Her costume is one of the most spectacular in Kabuki. Her black overrobe is covered with New Year's motifs. For example, there is a ritual rope with paper streamers and a lobster. When she faces the front, you can see a carp climbing a waterfall on the decorative flap of her sash, a manaita obi. Bearded Ikyu wants Agemaki. The lavish gold of his costume suggests wealth. <laughs> Agemaki loves Skeroku deeply, but Ikyu claims he is a thief. She takes off the black overrobe to reveal a red overrobe underneath. It has flowers and a giant drum with a flame pattern. I almost didn't know where to look next. What an amazing set of costumes! Seeing it again like this, they really are stunning. Mm. Let's meet someone who can tell us more about these wonderful costumes. Mr. Ebisawa. Hello. 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 Kabuki costumes are managed by specialist companies. Mr. Ebisawa runs our company. He's been involved with Kabuki costumes for over 30 years. 
The glittering costumes are a major element of kabuki. They're often designed to dazzle the audience. To explore this part of kabuki, let's take a closer look at some costumes. These are the top three elaborate and expensive kabuki costumes. We just saw two of them. Which do you think they were? The one which astonished me was Agemaki's outfit. Correct. So let's take a look at some of the details. Here it is. Her costume motif is the five festival seasons. First the Shogatsu or New Year Uchikake. The pattern includes symbols of the new year, a Shinto staff, lobster, dried persimmons and kombu kel. When I joined the firm, there was actually real kombu attached to the costume. The smell was pretty bad. Real kombu? Just hanging there. Too realistic. Yeah. And under the black uchikake is a red one, right? There it is. This is her March uchikake. It symbolizes peach blossom season. As the weather improved, the nobility would have curtained enclosures called manmaku. They would enjoy various pursuits inside. You can see a glimpse of a giant drum for gagaku and a storm of cherry blossom petals. And here is the manaita obi. There we go. The carp climbing a waterfall pattern is symbolic of May. The fringe of gold and silver thread shows the flow of water. The carp is moving up the waterfall. So this is a Japanese January, March and May. Three of the five traditional seasons in one costume. All at once, huh? But that's not all. Agemaki has three costumes, of which this is the first. Let's look at her second costume now. Here it is. Wow, that looks very different, doesn't it? This is called the farewell costume. The ink painting is always done by a famous artist. These kimono were worn by Nakamura Utaimon VI. I've been told that the pine's design was by Kai Higashiyama and the crane by Hoshun Yamaguchi. They actually painted the kimono? Yes, they hand-painted these ink pieces. Wow, so it really is a work of art in its own right. Just seeing them like this is an amazing experience. Just gorgeous. Now, we've looked at one of the top three expensive kabuki costumes. The first is worn by Agimaki. Let's turn to the second. It's worn by Hige no Ikkyu. Oh, wow! It's really stunning up close. I can't believe it. As you can see, the black cloth is embroidered with thick gold thread. The checks are a pattern called Gotenjo, seen on shrine and temple ceilings. Each square has a guardian deity of Edo. Seiryu, Byakko, Suzaku, and Genbu. They're repeated over the entire kimono. It's all embroidered. That's right. Directly sewn onto the fabric. Doesn't that take forever? It takes over a year. A year? And incredibly expensive. To make this today would cost at least as much as a top-end car. <laughs> Back to the story. The hero, Skeroku, appears in the costume of a handsome, fashionable man. He has a janome parasol, his kimono is black, and his under kimono is bright red. And he has a handsome purple headband. Skeroku tries to get Ikkyu angry, so he will draw his sword. Actually, 
Actually, Skeroku is searching for a treasured sword. He keeps picking fights to try to find the sword. When Skeroku's mother hears that her son is constantly picking fights in the pleasure quarters, she comes with his older brother. To restrain Skeroku, she makes him wear a kamiko. A kamiko is a kimono made of old paper and any rough movement will break it. This will keep Skeroku from fighting. They see off Skeroku's mother and brother. Then, who should appear but Ikkyu, the very man Skeroku wants to fight? Agemaki is now in a different costume. This is the Uchikake that we saw in the studio. Instead of the carp, her obi now shows bamboo decorated with streamers for the Tanabata festival. Ikkyu makes his second appearance, and he too is in a lavish costume made of lobster-colored brocade. Hidden behind Agemaki, Skeroku continues to provoke Ikkyu. Finally, Ikkyu draws his sword. And it is the very sword Skeroku has been searching for. There really are so many costumes in display. Beautiful. Let's take a look at the costume worn by Hiro Skeroku. Here it is. This has a very different feel. It's quite simple. Clean lines, but so cool. It's a very effective use of color for a seductive hero. It uses shioze, a good quality silk. It's made up of three different colors, black, red, and a very pale blue. Dyeing this black color is extremely difficult. If you just use black alone, it shines white under the stage lights. So, ever since the Edo period, a white fabric was first dyed crimson before being dyed black. The process is called benishta. That allows the kimono to show up as black even under dramatic lighting. I thought it was just black. Yeah, so did I. Guess not. It seems so simple, but there's a lot going on. There really is. Maybe that's why this outfit looks so chic. Now, Skiroku is later told by his mother to change into a paper costume that will rip if he gets into a fight. Is it really made of paper? A lot of it is made from fabric, but real costumes of paper actually do exist. Oh, wow! I believe that Sakata Tojiro, my grandfather, once wore a paper costume for one scene at a Chikamatsuza performance. No sudden movements. I think the idea of acting despite not being able to move has its own appeal. There are some trick costumes in Kabuki. Let's take a closer look.
The red kimono of this princess will change instantly. Watch carefully. Here it comes. There. Oh! When the upper layer is pulled off, this is called hikinuki. Now, let's look at a technique called bukkaeri. The top half comes down and drapes over the bottom half of the costume, and the red changes to black. Wow! This visually expresses a character revealing their true nature. It's so fast! One blink and you miss it! Hikinuki and bukkaeri are so cool! We use a very thick silk thread, like a kite string. A Japanese candle is rubbed into the silk so it won't get damp even when the actor perspires. The thread holds on the top layer and is sewn very loosely with about two fingers width between the stitches. The cords are pulled out by the actor and assistant to make the change. We re-sew those costumes every single day. A lot of work goes into those big surprise moments. That really is astonishing. Now the costumes of ordinary people living in a tenement. A gangster nicknamed Rakuda has died from fugu blowfish poisoning. A fellow gangster, Hanji, orders the waste paper seller, Kyuroku, to get the landlord to donate sake for the funeral. What did you think of the costumes in Rakuda? They were interesting. I thought they seemed like regular clothing worn at the time the play was written. You could easily buy them until quite recently. But fewer and fewer people wear kimono these days. Demand has almost disappeared, so kimono weavers are vanishing too. As a result, although we can buy these costumes, it costs several times more than it used to. Another difficulty for costume makers is that we need to alter them to look old and worn. A lot of new difficulties. Yes. What does the costume team do backstage during a performance? Well, let's take a look at what a costume professional does each day. Where are we? This is the costume room in Kabukiza. Sometimes there are as many as 15 people working in here. These people are called Ishokata or Ishoya. First, they care for all the costumes that are used in the performances every day. It's 4.30. The evening program has just started. Soon the hikomi will begin. The costumes of the actors who have finished are taken off and brought back to the costume room. After a costume is worn, we use benzene to remove sweat and stains. The collar always needs cleaning, and we wipe any place that has white makeup on it. We have to be careful not to damage the gold embroidery. We use lots of benzene, and it's bad for our hands. For a play with lots of actors and white makeup, we use eight half-liter bottles of benzene a day. What? It takes off our fingerprints. That's another tough part of the job. After the benzene dries, we iron out any wrinkles. While we iron, we check for places that need repairing and fix them. 
Then we put the costume on the shelf in the place for that actor. Oh, of course. You have to be ready for tomorrow. Are these decorations going to be used tomorrow as well? We also have to plan for future productions, next month, or the month after that, or tours. So we are discussing what colors to use. Mm. Wow, that's my dressing room. There is one costumer assigned to an actor. Not just any costumer will do. They have to roughly match the actor's size and also be very sensitive to the actor's mood. Then he will look his best on stage every day. This is a princess costume. That's the costume for Princess Kozakura. The kimono is tied on with only two cords, one at the hips and one near the chest. They have to be tied in the right place or the costume will come undone. It's difficult because the exact position is slightly different for every actor. When tying the obi, the actor, the costumer, and the actor assisting must all be perfectly in tune with each other. The obi for a princess goes up particularly high. If the obi is tied too tight, it's painful. But it has to be tied as tight as possible without being painful or it will come loose. The back collar is very important for an onagata. Yes, because men tend to have broad shoulders, we pull the back collar way down to make the actor's body look more feminine. The back collar can change the entire look. That's right. Now the costume is complete. When I put on the wig, I'm ready to go on stage. How long for a princess costume? About five minutes. That's very fast. It is fast, but the costumers are professionals. They're hard at work before and during the performance. You can tell just how much the kabuki world depends on the costume team. I'm so grateful all over again. I sweat an awful lot, so I know just how much I owe these guys. That hit home. <laughs> now our final play is Shunkyo Kagami Jishi. I play two roles in this. One, a young and innocent girl that changes in only a few minutes into a brave shishi lion. Here is the lady-in-waiting, Yayoi. She's dancing for the shogun. But when she starts dancing with the lion mask, the mask comes to life. The spirits of the lion possesses Yayoi and pulls her away. From the Hanamichi, she appears transformed into the lion. It's very difficult because the actor has to change backstage very quickly after appearing as Yayoi. A total transformation! Yes. Now, this dance came from No, so the costume is based on the No costume as well. This sleeveless coat is called a Happy, and it's dark blue with a bold pattern woven into it. The lion swings a very long mane. So the costume has to match the power of the movements. The okuchi hakama is made of densely woven material. On the white in gold, you see a design of a lattice and peony blossoms. Now, we have a special treat. Haruka will get to experience just how fast this costume is put on. I'm so lucky! What should I do? Is it okay to just stand here? That's fine. You saw me being dressed just now, right? You need to stand firmly or you'll tip over. So, center yourself. Got it. 
This is the Juban wrap. It's going on. Is it heavy? Are you okay? Yes, I think so. I'm doing okay. Now comes the difficult bit, the okuchi hakama. There is a special little part for the okuchi. This wooden hook is called the okuchiage. It all goes on in seconds. Yes, it needs to be done at this pace, or you can't manage the transformation from yayoi to the lion. Once you're in that, you'll start to feel the waves, okay? The hakama is hooked on to the okuchiage. This is a real skill. If the hakama is not inserted correctly, it will fall down as you're dancing. It's too heavy. It's quite a complicated costume, isn't it? Now the happy. Oh, wow! You're done. Thank you very much. Wow! What do you think? How do I look? Very good. That's it. It's such a striking costume, but it went on very fast. It's an astonishing skill, isn't it? What's the key to getting it on fast? Remembering the correct order, so you don't have to waste time thinking. The person in front, the actor, and the person behind all have to move perfectly together, or they won't be in time for the entrance. You were both in perfect sync. It was so cool. I've really learned a lot today about costumes. There's so much I didn't know. It's been a great experience. The colors or patterns of a kimono costume can carry great significance. So, when you watch a performance, keep an eye out for all the different possibilities. I think it'll add to your experience. Yes, take the time to enjoy these fantastic costumes on stage. I was amazed by the complexity of these costumes, the process of putting it on, but I can also feel the historical weight they carry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please visit our website. There are explanations of kabuki terms and the plays. You can also ask Kazutaro-san questions. Send us lots of questions and comments. We look forward to them. Now it's time for our ending. I think it's going to be great. Me too. Let's go. Are you ready? Okay. Today is...